I really want to see wide, wide, wide hands. All right, wide hands, hands following the mouth. Automatic release. Sit, sit, sit. I, that's what I do. And, the, and you make them as wide as you can. You watch, you watch. This is to get your <clears throat> balance. One, two, three, four, five. Wide hands and halting, sink in. Good, a little ducking in the air, huh? a little quick with your body in the air. Let him jump up to you, but your, your hands were good. Just slow your body down a little bit. How wide can you make your hands? Wide and sitting, melting into his back. Good, and in the center, once again, you feel your center, your core down through your feet and your legs. So this can be light, but this is quite strong. And your arms can be light. Wide. Good, but you're way off to the right, huh? So a little right leg, a little right leg. Elastic arms. You feel your balance with the wide hands, not touching the neck. Wide hands, good, and stopping him. Good, once back the other direction. Let's come right lead just inside the yellow there. And again, stopping straight. As it gets better, try to lighten your hands. I know they're a little fresh with the wind today. Supple arms. The wider you make your hands, the more you engage your core. Wide. Wide. All right, get his head up. Very, very good. He made a little boo-boo. The best thing about that was her legs stayed down when he bucked and played. She didn't lose her balance and she didn't have to go to the neck to hang on because her, her legs and her core were strong. Ooh. Wide hands. And stop straight. Good, and if you have to be a little strong, fine. And then she got light. You know, she half halt, got him strong, and then got light. Once again, put him a little deeper, a little deeper distance, not holding him off to that long one. To get a round jump, you want to get him right to the base. Lightness, giving and taking lightness. Right to the base. Wide hands, good. And your lower leg is much better when your hands are off the neck, right? Your foot stays underneath you. So a little bit of turning and having the hands turned over, it makes the riders a little more aware of the opening rein. Just by having the, the hands be a little different. Look at your jump, watch the jump. Look right. Okay, so in the air, I want you looking in more. It doesn't have to be a very severe angle. On top of this, you're going to look left because you're turning left. Look left. Better. Now relax. Relax. You don't have to have such a severe angle, but in the air, look right. Look right. Good, that's fast enough. That's fast enough. It's more how you use your eyes and your rein. Look left. Good, once again, come down here a little more. Come down here a little more so you can turn in the air. Look right, better. That it's Eyes left in the air and left opening rein. One, two, three, four, five. Good, and let him walk. Good. Good, same thing. Make, make sort of a circle because you've been standing a minute. 
Good. Better. So it's the use of your eyes and the rain. You know, by just doing, you know, two single fences, not a whole course, that they can repeat where they're looking and how they use the rain. Look right, right opening rain. Invite him to relax, a little half halt, give again. It's not about how fast you do it, it's simply the eyes and the leading rain. Look left. Good, little half hold, relax, look at it. That's fast enough. If anything, put him a little deep to get a round jump, to get his shape. Put him a little to a short. Now look right. Good. Invite him to relax. Good, and he should get softer and more relaxed. Better look left. Good, and no ducking. You hold your upper body. Good, and let him walk, very good. Since you can get that inside hand off the neck, you can use a leading rein or an opening rein. As I say, sometimes turning the rider's hands over so they feel different, it, it, uh, it helps because it feels a little different. Um, and, and I think that you have a more supple arm with your hand turned over. Your arm is a continuation of the rein a little more.